Hey, Mr. Engen here. Going to share my screen with you for this lesson. We are now moving on to experimental probability. And experimental probability is similar to theoretical probability. Um, but the difference is basically we are doing an experiment, just like it says or sounds like. Uh, we do an experiment of something, and that is how we express the probability of something happening. So you're going to want to get these notes down like normal. Um, you see here it's outlined in green. Uh, the ratio, or we can express it like a fraction. Um, we can expre express it as well like a decimal and percent also, like mentioned before. Um, it's the ratio of the number of times an event occurs, or whatever we're looking for, to the total, again, the second number or bottom number, the total number number of trials. And again, this is based on an experiment that we perform. Okay. Sorry, uh, my smart board is not working, so I cannot do a video on like I did before. So we'll have to do it this way. Okay. So here you can see it says a fair number cube is rolled 20 times with the following results. Okay, and it lists the numbers they got. Now with theoretical probability, right, if we were to say what is the probability of getting a 3, we would say it would be 1 out of 6, right? So 1 out of every 6 rolls in theory is what would be expected. Here you see an experiment happened. A number cube is rolled 20 times. Okay, and the results are here. So when it says, what is the experimental probability of getting a 1 or rolling a 1? Uh, we look at what the results were, and this is what we base our answer off of. It's based off of what happened. So we look at the, they're asking us about the probability of getting a 1. So we want to go through carefully and see how many times we get a 1. And I see 1, and that's it. Go through again because I want to be careful. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I got a one, one time, and that would be out of my bottom number is the total number of trials or times it happened, and that was 20. So the experimental probability here of getting a one is one out of 20. Okay, now again, remember this could be written as well as a uh, decimal or a percent. Right, so if you were to go in your calculator, one divided by twenty, you would get this five hundredths, or that would be five percent. Okay, so you have to remember that probability can be expressed these ways as well. All right, so for this one, Chantel tossed a fair coin, so a coin thinking heads or tails, typical coin. A hundred times, how many heads and tails are most likely out of the hundred tosses? So it, they didn't give us the results of anything that happened. They're just asking us um, how many heads and tails are most likely. So if you think of your theoretical probability, right, it would be one half, right, or 50% chance to get a heads or a tails. So if I flip a coin 100 times, I would expect something close to be 50-50, 50, 50 heads and 50 tails. Now, if I do an experiment, I might not get exactly that for sure, uh, but I would expect it to be um, close to 50 heads and 50 tails because the theoretical probability is one half. Okay. The table below shows the results of tossing a coin four times. So you get a head, a tail, a head, a head. Okay, so this was an experiment. Flip a coin four times. What was the experimental and theoretical probability of getting heads? What was the experimental and pro theoretical probability of getting heads? Well, Experimental is what happened, right? So how many times did I get heads? Well, I got one. Got heads one, two, three times, right? 
So three out of my total amount of times that it was flipped was one, two, three, four. So the experimental probability is three fourths. I don't see three fourths, so again, I have to be able to to go between fractions and percents. I know three fourths is seventy five percent. I see seventy five percent here, but I also see it here, right? Well, the second part of the question is the theoretical probability. I know the theoretical probability of getting uh, heads or tails is fifty percent, right? The theoretical would not be seventy five; it would be fifty. So my answer here is D. The experimental probability was in fact 75%, but the theoretical probability of getting heads is 50%, and that will never change. Okay, Dante tossed a coin 25 times. Heads turned up 17 times. What was his experimental probability of getting heads? Well, he got heads 17 times, right? So that's what happened. That was the result of getting heads out of a total of 25. Okay? So, they try to trick you here by putting 17%, right? But just because you got had 17 times doesn't mean that's the percent. It was out of 25 times. So, in order to figure that out, we have to go 17 divided by 25, and change it to a decimal, and then the percent, and that would be D. Okay? Go ahead and try this one and pause the video. Okay, a coin is flipped 12 times. Which experimental outcome is most consistent with theoretical probability? And again, with a coin, if it's flipped 12 times, we would expect it to happen 50-50. So we would cut this number in half and expect six heads and six tails. Okay. Try these next two on your own. Okay. Miriam conducted 40 trials of her experiment. She got a sum of five, seven times. What is the experimental probability of getting a sum of five based on Miriam's experiment? Well, she did 40 trials, so I know that's the total number of times it happened. And it says here, I want to read carefully, she got a sum of five, but it happened seven times. That's the key. So, the experimental probability of getting a five, a sum of five, based on the experiment, is seven out of 40. And that is B. If you got B, you're in good shape. Okay, this one we have to think a little bit more about, because um, we have multiple people for this baseball thing. So it says, a baseball coach keeps track of his player at bats and hits. If each player was at bat once, um, who would be most likely to get a hit? So we have these four people. Jack got 18 out of 40, Stuart 34 out of 64, 11 out of 14 for Meredith, and Ned got 41 out of 90. So, for example, what we have to do is take each one of these. For example, here's Jack got 18 out of 40, right? They all had different number of at-bats, so, so we have to convert these into percents to see who got the highest percent of hits. And so if we do that on our calculator and divide 18 divided by 40, we would get 0.45, and that of course is 45%. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's almost half the times. So Stuart would then be 34 divided by 64, and for Stuart you would get 0.53125, that would be about 53%, okay, this would equal 45%, forgive my writing, <laughs> uh, 53 hundredths is going to be 53%, Meredith got 11 out of 14, which is 0.78 or 78%. Let's put that here. And then Ned, Mr. Ned, got 41 out of 90. So again, you can divide, and that is 0.45555. So we just put 45%. So if I'm coaching this team, 
and we have to put someone up at bat to, to try to get a hit. I'm going to pick Meredith for sure because Meredith got Meredith gets 78% of the time she gets a hit. So that's a really good percentage, and that's higher than the other, other players. Okay? Great. Oops, wrong way. Okay, here we go. Tony rolled a number cube 20 times and recorded her results below. Based on her experimental data, what is the probability of rolling a 3? Well, if we go through this. Okay, she did it 20 times, so I know that my denominator is 20 for this experiment. Um, and it's asking what is the probability of getting a 3. So we have to go through and be careful and see how many 3s we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I want to do that again and be careful. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I see 5, 3. So it's 5 out of 20. Okay. Now, my answers are expressed as decimals. So I know that 5 over 20 reduces to 1 fourth. And I know 1 fourth is one of those common fractions. That is a decimal is, of course, 25 hundredths. Again, you could take your calculator and just go 5 divided by 20. Or you could go 1 divided by 4, too. And that will give you, give you your answer. Okay? So... Um, let's do one, let's do this one. Try this one. Pause the video. Okay, the theoretical probability of getting heads on a coin flip is one half. If Susan flips a coin seven times and never gets heads, never keyword, what is the experimental probability of getting heads? Right? What do you think? Well, she never got heads. So for the experimental probability, it's zero. She didn't get any. Zero, zero, zero. Okay? Well, that's all I have for experimental probability. I hope everyone is doing really, really well and getting outside when the weather is nice. There will be attached some practice uh, problems. It'll say additional practice. And the answers will be attached. So you should try those problems when you... Uh, after watch, after watching this video. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you so very much. See you soon. Bye.